The Las Vegas Raiders are a franchise with great history, but they're also a team that's enjoyed minimal success over the past 20 years. After numerous failed seasons, the only thing that's changed is the city they play in. It's time to rebuild and restore this franchise. Welcome to the channel, everybody. My name is Mr. Hurricane, and this is episode one of the Las Vegas Raiders franchise rebuild on Madden 24. It's my first new football series in quite some time now over here, as I've been focused primarily on baseball content through 2023. But it's time to get back to the gridiron, time to get back to the rebuilds we've been doing on here for the past six years or so. And as the NFL season came to an end, I thought about who I wanted to take over. And we are taking over here following the 2023 regular season. And we have some of the correct playoff results actually in our franchise here as well. So I have all the stats intact for this year. The draft order should mostly mirror what happens in real life outside of the teams that are still alive in the postseason. But this is where our journey is set to begin. The Raiders as a franchise do have a great history with fantastic players, coaches such as John Madden, and their three-time Super Bowl champions. But the last time they won was 40 seasons ago. It's been a long wait for this franchise, and along the way, it's not exactly been a promising run. When I first got into football, the Raiders were actually one of the better teams in the AFC. And the last time they won a playoff game was in this 2002 season in the AFC Championship. And with the Detroit Lions winning a playoff game this past weekend, the Miami Dolphins now have the longest playoff winning drought in the NFL. But the Raiders are right behind them. The last time the Raiders won a playoff game was in the 2002 AFC Championship. That was so long ago, their leading receiver in that game was Hall of Famer Jerry Rice. The Raiders lost the Super Bowl that season, and from that point on, this franchise has never been the same. The 2000s were riddled with double-digit losing seasons, including seven straight through the mid-2000s. And since their last playoff victory, as we jump back to the present, they've had 13 seasons with 10 plus losses. And they've hired nine different head coaches, and that doesn't include the interim coaches. They've actually had more success under their last two interim coaches, Rich Bisaccia and Antonio Pierce, than a lot of their recent hires, including the latest Raiders failure, in trying to bring in Josh McDaniels to install the Patriot way, which doesn't seem to work if you're missing number 12. Predictably, the Josh McDaniels era came and went with the Raiders in less than two seasons, and Antonio Pierce took over this year, and I really feel like with an 8-9 and nine record going 5-4 and four as the interim coach, I think Antonio Pierce did a fantastic job and squeezed everything he could out of this roster they had a respectable defense this year and they won some games that people didn't expect them to have a chance to the raiders have some star power on this team at the top of their roster max crosby gives them a cornerstone player on defense as one of the best pass rushers in the nfl and offensively, you've got two stars in Devontae Adams, who grew up a Raider fan and specifically wanted to go to the Raiders after his prior years in Green Bay. And there's also Josh Jacobs, one of the NFL's best running backs, and two years ago had a phenomenal season. They hit big when they drafted Colton Miller in the first round a handful of years ago. And they've also got a good special teams unit. But the drop-off on this roster is significant. And if you want to compete in the AFC, especially with the Chiefs right by you in this division, this roster has to get better. This is just not going to cut it. The Raiders have become a, a bit of a feel-good story this season, being able to get to 8-9, and nine, 
But there's a long way to go if they're to compete with the top teams in the AFC. And this team just simply needs more talent. They've got to find, of course, their next quarterback. Or they're never going to have a chance in a conference that has Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, and Josh Allen. And Raider fans, I know you're all aware you're going to be dealing with Mahomes for a very long time. The bar is set very high for this team to be competitive again. It's certainly been a long wait for fans of this franchise. And I know in the last 10 years, the Derek Carr era actually raised the level of success when they had all those double-digit losing seasons. At least with Carr, they did have two playoff appearances. I do think it was time to move on from Derek Carr, but they still aren't any closer to finding who their next quarterback of the future is. It's been such a long wait for this Raiders franchise, this isn't even my first time attempting to rebuild them. Those of you that have watched the channel for a long time over on my main channel will remember my Raiders franchise on Madden 13. It was my second big franchise ever. It was a short series, it only went three years, but we did have some success in there. We won a Super Bowl at the end of it. By the way, I was watching back some of this video from over 10 years ago, and I came across this clip here that I thought was kind of funny. They have to get to the 30, as Cannon's throw is incomplete, but a flag is down! Roughing the passer on New England, they flag Dante Hightower. Let's take a look here. Was this a flag? Oh my, yeah that was. I've been at this for a long time, and I'm willing to revisit teams I've already rebuilt in the past. But it does say something that I rebuilt the Raiders a bit 10 years ago, and now here today, very little has actually changed despite the entire Derek Carr era coming and going. There's been two playoff appearances, no playoff wins, and like I said, no playoff wins since the 2002 NFC Championship. So if you have watched the past rebuilds on my channel, this is going to be a series just like it. We're going to watch games in a slow sim fashion where I'm acting as the GM. I don't actually play the games in these rebuilds because it really makes the players, you know, handle all the business on the field. And it's been a very enjoyable experience throughout many different series. And I've come to love this style of play. And we also simulate and cover a lot of ground throughout the episodes, so we are legitimately going to go through a lot of seasons quite easily. It's a very versatile format, and one now that I haven't been creating content for since about March of last year when I moved over to baseball with the success of the Oakland A's franchise. But it certainly feels good to be back. Just getting clips and setting up things for the first episode here in the series. It just felt nice to be back. And I hope that I can take this format a step forward and give those of you that have missed that content the return that you deserve. We do have a coach here in this series by the name of AJ Ray, who was the star receiver with my franchise back on Madden 13 and my favorite player from that team. So he is going to be the coach that takes over the Raiders here in this series. In real life, I'm hoping to see them move on with Antonio Pierce and see if they can build around the identity he seemed to create there over the nine games he had an opportunity. But for this series, we're picking up here in the 2023 playoffs. Now, to get to this point... You're not able to go into Madden right now and just pick up where the real NFL currently is. You can start at week one, week 10. Okay, this is here now. Okay, they just put that in the last couple days. My method was a lot more convoluted. I might recreate this because I didn't do anything. Now, one thing I do in series like this, because I am actually in a cloud franchise here. That way I can pick up where the real season is. I can have the stats and everything. I'm okay, even though uh, in a couple years they will turn off the servers and this will be inaccessible. So always keep that in mind when you're trying to uh, pick between offline and cloud franchise. But if you just go and start from that starting point, you're going to have the same draft class as everybody else who starts at that starting point. So I like to import a class from a completely separate franchise. I have not seen any ratings on these players. 
I had my wife hit the uh, edit players button and like save a class. And then I can import it without ever, ever seeing any of the ratings. So I got this class from something separate. So it's unique. I've been really looking forward to starting this series, partially because way back in September, I put a lot of hours and a lot of effort into crafting my XP and progression sliders. This is what I think can really set apart this franchise from past franchise rebuilds that I've done. Progression and regression was never really where I would want it in my past series, and given this game has way more sliders, I wanted to put the time into creating what I thought would be kind of my definitive set that would give me an experience where the young players are able to develop quickly and become stars and sign big contracts when they're contracts are up after the rookie contracts and then where the veteran players regress a little bit faster a little bit more aggressively so that the young players are able to take on starting roles and entrench themselves as the stars of the league and you just get that natural cycle that I don't think Madden really allowed you to accomplish with uh, past games and the lack of settings here so I tested the heck out of this set back in September, and you're going to see things like, you know, running backs regress pretty quickly, receivers as well, and then in the secondary too, some of these positions that rely a bit more on raw athleticism, and I'm really excited to see it in this series because I know we're going to cover a lot more ground a lot quicker, and we should be able to see these successes play out really nicely. So... We're going to start this franchise here, and next episode is going to be the offseason. Today, we are setting the foundation, just talking about the team a little bit and introducing everyone to this series. The Raiders went 8-9 and nine this year, which is impressive given the way they started under Josh McDaniels. The Raiders are set to pick at 13 this year in the draft, and they have picks in every round plus three seventh-round selections. I mentioned their cornerstone players earlier. At the top of this list, we do have Max Crosby. We do not have Max Crosby's tattoos, unfortunately. But Crosby is a dominant edge rusher, and that's where I think every defense should try to begin their build, around someone who can get to the opposing quarterback. He's really ascended these last couple years, and he is a true superstar. The Raiders also have him under contract. It did not play out in storybook fashion when Devontae Adams went to his childhood favorite team to play alongside his college quarterback in Derek Carr. I don't think he saw this coming. He is a fantastic receiver who did not look like he was capable of this the first two years in his career. But now he's probably playing himself into the Hall of Fame. He's under contract. Those cap numbers get pretty outrageous in 2026. But he's also someone that a team in this position might think about trading. The other star of this offense is Josh Jacobs, who really had a strong year three ahead of his contract being up, or that was his year four. 1,600 yards, 12 touchdowns, that's just the rushing. 2,000 scrimmage yards. Now this year, it was uh, quite a big step down, especially in the efficiency, going down in 1.4 yards per carry. I think Jacobs is still a star and someone you can build an offensive identity around, but the Raiders were hesitant to give him big money and he's going to be a free agent at the end of this year. So you've got immediately a couple big decisions. You have, you know, no quarterback of the future, but one of the best receivers in the NFL. You have a key running back you'll have to look to re-sign or not. And the team still has a long list of needs, even if you manage to keep those players. Another one of their better players is left tackle Colton Miller. They do have a good blindside protector for whoever their next quarterback could be. A.J. Cole's a great punter, but I think the Raiders would like to use him a little bit less than they do. The talent drop-off happens to be quite steep once you get past those top players. Jacoby Myers is a fine wide receiver, a good number two, number three. Nate Hobbs in the secondary. Andre James at center, Trayvon Merrig. Then you got Daniel Carlson, Robert Spillane, 
who uh, I want to say was, yeah, he's the captain of the defense here. You know, I always have to bring that up. But the team certainly needs a lot more. Outside of Colton Miller and center Andre James, there's still work to be done along this offensive line. You got Max Crosby, but defenses are so much better when pressure shows up from multiple players. They took Tyree Wilson this year in the first round, and it appears it was a slow start to his NFL career, but he does have fantastic athleticism. There's, you know, a lot of theoretical potential there, but it can be hard to realize it. 73 power moves, 73 block shed. There is a long road ahead, but you've got to be patient. Robert Spillane is the best linebacker this team has. There's also Divine Diablo, Luke Masterson. And then in the secondary, Nate Hobbs, along with Jack Jones and Meek Robertson. At safety, Trayvon Merrig and Marcus Epps. The best way I can describe it is that there's just not enough here. With the roster in its current shape, the Raiders need an upper-tier quarterback to propel them if they're going to have any success. And they just don't have that right now. They did bring in Jimmy Garoppolo. I'm sure Josh McDaniels thought that was at the least a lateral move from Derek Carr. And uh, that has not played out that way. I'm not sure it was all that surprising that Aiden O'Connell ended up making as many starts as he did this year. But I just don't view him as a future starter. He's had a late start to his NFL career at 25 years old. He doesn't have a very strong arm, the most accurate arm, a lot of mobility. There's just nothing there that says this guy is a starter. And now he's got experience indicating that he's likely more of a backup and maybe a decent one. But we need a starter on this team. Another young player I do want to talk about here is Michael Mayer. I think he will be a very solid piece to build around offensively. Not a game changer, but I think he can easily be a solid starting tight end for a number of years. Jack Jones has picked off two passes in each of his two NFL seasons. Maybe he's somebody that could become a solid starter. I think there are some good ratings in place, but Nate Hobbs is the only one I think I'd trust at this point. I forgot Brian Hoyer threw passes for the Raiders this season. That did happen. Combined, the Raider quarterbacks threw 19 touchdowns this season with 18 interceptions. This was one of the worst performing offenses in the NFL, despite the star power. Josh Jacobs got hurt this season, wasn't as efficient, so Zamir White finished the year as the starter. He had 451 yards. And then Devontae Adams had his 100 catches, 1,000 yards you expect, with a very low yards per reception, probably because of the quarterback change. Jacoby Myers was solid. They uh, forgot Hunter Renfro exists. I don't know. Maybe he hasn't been that good the last couple years, but his production has fallen off a cliff. And it's kind of shocking he hasn't been traded. But the reason for that is probably this contract. Ain't no one taking that on willingly. Robert Spillane was highly productive this year. And I wonder when we sim forward if he won't get a development boost because productive linebackers that stuff the stat sheet like that tend to earn that. Outside of him, of course, Max Crosby had his 14 and a half sacks. There was eight from Malcolm Kuntz, who's only a couple years into his career. So you'd like him to be somebody else we could count on going forward. The secondary managed to pick off a fair amount of passes at the same time, and their defense graded out quite decently. They were 12th against the pass, 7th in points allowed. That to me, that to me is really impressive, especially because the offense clearly wasn't very good. And oftentimes, these bad offenses put so much stress on the defense, even their numbers cannot hold up. I feel like I've seen that countless times with, you know, various Jets teams that have had good defenses and terrible offenses or the Cleveland Browns for a number of years. But the defense was good in spite of of all of the extra stress put upon them. There was even a game this year where they lost three to nothing. The offense couldn't score against the Minnesota Vikings, which also happens to be the last time I enjoyed myself watching football. It does appear we're going to have some cap space going into this offseason to make some things happen. 
That may or may not include keeping Josh Jacobs. Let's take a look at the free agents we've got to think about in our first offseason. It's kind of weird starting a series at the offseason, but that's why I try to take the time to lay the foundation here with the team. So if we want to bring back Josh Jacobs, I think the contracts will be fairly reasonable, and he has a lot of interest in returning. And if we have all this cap space, this is the kind of thing you can do. When you're not paying a quarterback a ton of money, you can now pay a running back a lot of money. The running back question really comes into play for teams that kind of have their stuff together a little bit more in some cases. There's Bilal Nichols, Andre James, the starting center, Amik Robertson, Tyler Hall. Doesn't seem there are too many key free agents or difficult decisions here. And if we have a lot of cap space, it's saying 65 million. Not worried about much. What I am worried about is uh, kind of a big deal. For one, Jimmy Garoppolo is not the quarterback of this team's future. We'll have to see if there is an out in this contract as far as cutting him. When I try to do these series, you know, I, I want to do things a bit more realistically. So I won't just trade Jimmy away to get the money off the books. I, I first think, like, does this player actually have trade value? Would I ever trade for this player? Uh, no one's trading for Garoppolo's contract, so I'll have to cut him, if anything. But who is going to start games for us when we get into the 2024 season? Aiden O'Connell is probably not going to be the big answer for this team. So, you think about the NFL draft. I've imported a class here, and it does have a couple quarterbacks at the very top with top five projections. There is also Lorenzo Hall, who might be more of a mid-first round option. So there could be a quarterback for us, but a lot of teams ahead of the Raiders that are also in that quarterback market. Even if there were a free agent, say somebody like Kirk Cousins becomes available for us, the Vikings don't keep him around. This, to me, isn't the type of team you slap a veteran quarterback onto. I think you have to start fresh. So let's say those other quarterbacks go in the top five. Could Lorenzo Hall be our guy if he's there or if we have to move up? And I think I would be willing to move up for the right quarterback. Lorenzo Hall, good to great throw power, solid to good speed, a fair amount of mobility, and then B deep accuracy, B medium, and A short with A throw on the run, A under pressure. The only thing I don't like here is the C awareness will play more of a factor when you're watching the games as we will in this series. But I think right now Lorenzo Hall would be a very good option. And actually he's one of the few players I seem to come across in this franchise in Madden 24 where uh, injury is actually not as much of a concern. So many injury prone players here in these drafts. The top two quarterbacks here, I just think, are probably out of our trade-up reach. Denzel Stockton looks to be a very good downfield thrower. Steve Wolf also seems to be a strong-arm downfield passer. I think all three of these quarterbacks look really good, but Lorenzo Hall might not require as much of a trade-up. We'll have to check on the mock drafts. Then there's Drew Peters, and usually in day two, there's just too much of a drop-off at the position. You've got some developmental options. But Drew Peters, his accuracy would just frustrate Devontae Adams. Now, being that I've started so late here in the season, you open in the wild card round, I haven't scouted these players, but the team had some scouts, obviously, so... There is some completion percentage on a few of these players, but a lot of players are going to be stuck at 50%, and I'm going to have to take some time on my own to build a board and find some players I'm intrigued with. Quarterback is just one thing. This team needs so much else. I'm hoping we can, you know, even if we have to trade up for the quarterback, I hope we can find a way to get multiple contributors this year to start really building the team up. And one thing we're going to do as well is start fresh with our coordinators. And next episode in the offseason, we will hire an OC and DC for AJ Ray. In these series, I do really more play the role of the GM, but I really enjoy watching the games, calling those games. If you're not familiar with my content, I do a play-by-play -play style commentary. 
And if you've never watched a franchise like this, definitely give it a chance for a couple episodes because it's a, a really fun format that allows us to move quick but still get that enjoyment of watching a team hopefully get built up the proper way. And things move at a pretty solid pace. I think I forgot just how much I miss doing content like this. It feels good to get this episode one going. I'm excited to see everybody's thoughts on it. And very excited to get back to rebuilding on Madden, watching the games, having those fun moments, watching. Honestly, we get some incredible games at times. Great comebacks, great performances. You never know what it's going to be. And in every past series I've done, I've just played all pro default sliders in slow simulation. And I think I've got hundreds of games on the channel that illustrate that this is a working formula. I've already locked in the forced wins for the wildcard round that will mimic what happened in real life. But we're going to likely get on to our offseason here before any divisional games are played. So we'll start to carve our own path with the Raiders, starting with our first offseason. And that is coming your way next in episode two. We start the rebuild of the Raiders. We'll find out what young players we're going to start our journey with as we look to build up a team in this AFC gauntlet in the same division as Patrick Mahomes, the same division that also has Justin Herbert, although that team's been as much of a mess as the Raiders, if not more. And we'll see what happens with the Denver Broncos, but they're just kind of weird. I likely could have chosen a worse team, a larger project for this series, and the Patriots come to mind. But the Raiders were the team that I got excited about when I thought about building them and the challenges that would be ahead. After so many rebuilds of taking some of the worst teams in the league that pick the earliest, I'm starting to gravitate towards some of those middle of the pack teams that maybe aren't going to naturally select in the top five to find answers at critical positions. I kind of think the mid-tier teams offer a unique challenge and I've enjoyed it so far with my Saints on the main channel back to do it again with the Raiders over here. So if you wouldn't mind, please leave a like on the video if you're excited about this Raiders rebuild getting underway. Subscribe to the channel as we launch this series and leave your thoughts down below. Looking forward to your feedback. And if you have any questions, I'll see if I can address some of those in the next episode. Of course, it'll be our off season, first of the series. Take care, everybody, and I'll see you in episode two.